Well, hello there, everybody. This is your friendly Professor Peter Shickley with another report from Hoople. And the top of the morning to all of you out there from all of us up here at WOOF, Hoople, North Dakota. Now, I don't want to bore you with a lot of useless chit-chat this morning when I could be doing it with a lot of useless music, so let's get started right away with some PDQ Bach. And we like to do this number for Arthur and Bob and Cliff and David and Esther and Fiona and Gerard and Herb and Irene and Josie and Catherine and Larry and Molly and Norman and Olaf and Phil and Quentin and Ralph and Steve and Tom and Ursula and Vince and Warren and Zena and Yvonne and Zeke. So let's listen now as we hear a virtuosi de Hoople performing the Echo Sonata for Two Unfriendly Groups of Instruments by PDQ Bach. Shickley number nine. 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 Uh, excuse me, folks. Uh, we seem to have the tape on backwards or something. Let's give it another try. All right, now we will hear the PDQ Bach Echo Sonata for two unfriendly groups of instruments. <laughs> Well, it's uh, better, but it still doesn't sound quite right. Hmm, let's see. I don't recognize that. I think I must have... Uh, let's try rewinding and starting all over again. Okay. Now, uh, let's... Let's hear a PDQ box, Echo Sonata, for two uh, unfriendly groups of instruments. Ah. Well, folks, you have just heard PDQ. Uh-oh. Well, folks, I'm afraid the uh, tape is broken on me here. So I'll have it fixed in just a jiffy. Well, it sure is a heck of a way to start the morning, isn't it? Okay. There. Now we're ready to hear a PDQ box echo sonata for two unfriendly groups of instruments. Uh, the west wall is blown out, so uh, I 
think we'll have a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Suffer from? Do you suffer from? Do you suffer from the pain that dread hay fever brings? Do you suffer from the pain? Do you suffer from the pain? Do you suffer from the pain that dread hay fever? Brings. The pain, the pain, the pain. Now it's time for New Horizons in Music Appreciation. Different approaches to the problem of popularizing the 19th century classics. Now, unlike the Baroque masterworks, 19th century pieces such as the Beethoven symphonies are usually so long and melodramatic that the average listener has to be informed through the use of program notes as to what's going on in order to prevent him from falling into a confused slumber. The only trouble is that they always turn the lights down in concert halls, so you can't read the notes while the piece is being played. So, here is a new solution to a perennial problem. Good evening, music fans. Here we are at Philharmonic Hall in New York Mills, Minnesota. It's a beautiful night for a concert. There's not a cloud in the ceiling. And there's quite a crowd out here. Uh, about how many do you think there are, Bob? Oh, I don't know, Pete. Well, neither do I, but it's quite a crowd. And I think they're looking forward to hearing the New York Mills Philharmonic playing against the Danish conductor Heilige Dankesang. And here he comes now, ascending the podium. And the players are all lined up and ready to begin the first inning of Beethoven's Symphony number no. five in C minor. And they're off with a four note theme. It's a very exciting. The beginning of a symphony is always very exciting, folks. I don't know whether it's slow or fast yet because it keeps stopping. It doesn't seem to be able to get off the ground yet. And it looks like, yes, it looks like we're coming up to a cadence here, folks. Uh, the violins didn't cut off there. A little trouble with the violins. They weren't watching. And there's that four-note theme again, folks. And another stop. Just can't seem to get this piece off the ground. 
Now it seems to be rolling a little bit. Seems to be building up. Tell me, Bob, do you think you'd call that four-note idea a theme or a motif? Well, Pete, the uh, technical term would be motif, which he uses to build a theme. I see. Thanks for setting me straight about that, Bob. Well, we're heading into the second theme section here, and we can expect a little modulation down there. Wow, did you hear that, Bob? Somebody down there in the horn section really flubbed that note. That was one of the worst fumbles I think I've ever witnessed in all my days. I think it was number one, wasn't it, Bob? Yes, it was, Pete. That was uh, Bobby Corno in the first chair, and that's the third major flub he's made this season, giving him a solo average for the season of approximately .247P55, which is pretty darn low for a first chair man. You think there's some chance he might be sold to another orchestra? Well, it's hard to say, Pete. Uh, Corno's very good in the long solos, things like the uh, rock mining off my Anakin Gerardo. So I think if he pulls himself together a bit, uh, they'll probably keep him around, although I suppose he might... Well, I think it's in. development time down there now, Bob. Uh, let's see what's going to happen. The horns are starting it off. Uh, they seem to be in pretty good shape now, and I get the feeling that we're probably going to be hearing a lot of that four-note motif, don't you, Bob? Yes, I do, Pete. So do I, Bob. Well, they obviously are stuck with that four-note motif, and uh, they're going to be fooling around with it for quite a while. You notice it's pretty hot in here, Bob? Uh, yes, I do, Pete. Yeah, I think the uh, air conditioning has gone off, which is just one of the things... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's something going on down there on the stage, folks. There's something happening down there. It's really building up tension. The crowd is getting very excited. The brasses have come in and the timpani and everybody, and it's extremely exciting. I think we're building up to a fugue. No, the basses are not picking up the theme, folks. It is not a fugue. The violins tried to make it one, but the basses are not following up. No, instead of a few folks, he seems to be taking the theme and breaking it up into little pieces. Just two notes left of that theme now being thrown around from player to player. And it's getting softer and softer down there, folks. I think they're losing steam. They seem to be running out of steam. And it's just getting a little bit lethargic down there, if you want to know the truth. It's gotten down to one note now. And things are... Wait a minute! The brasses have come in and tried to pep things up. A welcome relief. But I'm afraid to no avail. Things are still pretty somber. Wait a minute. They hear they come again. They're really determined. It sounds very familiar. And I think we've reached the recap, Bob, don't you? There's no doubt about it, Pete. Your average Beethoven symphony usually has a recap right after the uh, second quarter. And this one is falling right into line. Well, let's see if those violins can cut off with the rest of the orchestra and the cadence is coming up. Wait a minute, this time it's the oboe holding the note too long. Wait, he's, he's playing a cadenza. He must be out of his mind. He thinks it's an oboe concerto. The conductor's standing down there or he doesn't know what to do. Have you ever heard anything like that, Bob? I uh, certainly haven't, Pete. I think it was a disgraceful display of lack of uh, teamsmanship. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if Highwood's name wasn't on the roster next season, although I must say that the fans really seem to go for these uh, outbursts of temperament. Well, I always say, Bob, professional music teams wouldn't exist without the spectators. Anyway, we're into the home stretch here with the second theme coming up, and we should be in C minor right up to the double bar. Wait a minute. That's really something, Bob. The piece is billed as being in C minor, and yet it looks like it's going to end in C major. It's really something, Pete. Well, I think it's something that the Composers Commission ought to look into, and I suspect that they will as soon as this uh, gets out. But it looks like it's going to be an ending anyway. Things are building up a little there. The violins have really gotten a hold of things. They're really beginning to roll. And now he's adding all the woodwinds there. He's thrown in all his brass and the timpani. And it's tuning all the way, folks. He's got a great piece on his hands here. And he looks like he's really coming into the home stretch. Well, I guess that about wraps it up, hey, Bob? Yeah, Pete, it's been a good piece. I think he can really have something to be proud of himself here. Wait a minute! The brasses are taking the theme! They're not letting it stop! They're taking the theme and running ahead! Bob, this piece is definitely going to go into overtime. I can see that. The crowd is going wild. They're standing up on their feet. They're jumping. They're stomping. They're yelling. And let me tell you that down on that stage, the players are doing a bit of running around themselves. Nobody, but nobody knows where the theme is. The audience, nor the players, nobody knows where that theme is. Everybody is running around, and believe me, it's very exciting. This is the kind of thing that only happens once in ten years, folks. They've got a new theme going on down there. I can't believe it. Bob, do you know where this new theme comes from? Well, Pete, it probably comes from, uh, uh, no, I don't, Pete. Well, they're tossing it around now. Uh, the woodwinds have it, and then the strings have it. Nobody seems to be able to keep his hands on that theme. It's getting tossed around from player to player, from section to section, and believe me, folks, the audience is just as confused as the players is about who is going to have that theme finally. 
Wait a minute, the strings have got a hold of it. The strings have got a hold of that theme, and they are not going to let go! What's this? I can't believe my ears! It sounds as if it's another recap! It sounds as if he's going right back to the beginning! If this is true, it's the first time it's happened in ten years of concert casting. Wait, wait a minute. Those sound like final chords, though. This may be... That may be it, folks. I'm looking down at the referee. Yes, yes, that is it. That is the end of the piece. The players are taking off their helmets, and the conductor has turned around and is acknowledging the cheers of the crowd. Well, it was quite a symphony, wasn't it, Bob? It was quite a symphony, Pete, and I think the fans uh, feel that they got their money worth. So do I, Bob. And I don't think there's any doubt about who won this contest, either. Uh, as a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the critics slap a stiff penalty on some of the players, particularly Bobby Corno. Neither would I, Pete. And, of course, this was a very important victory for uh, Haile Gadankazong, since it puts him right up there at the top of the conductor's league. That's right, Bob. That means that he'll be up against the Fargo-Moorhead Symphony in the World 12-Tone Series next month. And uh, let's see, they not only lead the orchestral league, but I think they're unbeaten this season, aren't they, Bob? You said it, Pete, and if uh, Nakazan can win four concerts off them, he'll be the first conductor to earn the pennant since uh, Toscanini. Well, that's quite a challenge, Bob. Now I think I'd better be heading down to the locker rooms to have a chat with Dunkazong himself. Well, Pete, I think he was supposed to be doing a baton commercial after the concert, but uh, why didn't you give it a try? I'll do that, Bob. So for now, this is Pete Chickaly. And, uh... Bob Dennis, signing off for the wonderful wide world of notes. WOOF gives you the time of day. At the sound of the tone, the time will be exactly 8.23. Mr. Weatherman, what do you say? Will it be nice? Or will it be stormy today? Those of you who have looked out of your window this morning have probably been surprised to see that there is no weather today. This unusual condition is due to a surprise wildcat strike by members of the Weather Bureau Employees Union, Local 30.2 and Falling, and is expected to continue through tomorrow night with the possibility of clearing up by Saturday. Some members, however, have said that they intend to cross the picket line. So our forecast for today and tomorrow is for scattered weather over the greater Hoople area. Now here's the news. The news is brought to you by the Hoople Scoop. And let's see what we have today. A bridge under construction in southeastern Kansas City collapsed today, spilling 35 men into tons of fresh concrete. 18 were taken to hospitals, but none was critically injured. That's our headline story for today. And on the international front, all places of entertainment in Tanzania have been closed for 24 hours to encourage people to stay at home today for the first national census in 10 years. Now let's take a look at a report from the West Hoople Stockyards. Hogs, 1,000, barrels and gilt steady, 1 to 3, 210 to 250 pounds, 2125 to 2150. 2 and 3, 250 to 290 pounds, 2025 to 2125. Number 3, 290 to 300 pounds, 1975 to 2025. Medium, 1 to 3, 160 to 200 pounds, 20 to 21. Now the New York spot quotations on eggs, standards 24 to 26, checks 16 and a half to 17. Whites extra fancy large to 30 and a half to 32 and a half. Fancy medium 23 to 24. Fancy large 29 and a half to 31. Medium 22 to 23. And smalls 16 and a half to 17 and a half. And that's the news for today from the Hoople Scoop. We have a real treat in store for us now. PDQ Box Traumerei for unaccompanied piano, 
performed on the actual piano that P.D.Q. Bach owned when he wrote this piece. Now, I'd like to emphasize before playing this tape that it is a field recording made at Fort Fort in the home of the man who owns the piano under conditions which were not ideal. But I think the historical importance of this recording far outweighs any considerations of high fidelity. So here is Mr. Heinrich Seifenblaser playing PDQ box Trauma Rye for unaccompanied piano. And we've got a request here from Clara W. to dedicate this to Bob and John. Sonny, don't play with that. Don't play with that. Hey, don't touch, don't play with that wall plug. Now, Frau Brown, did you tell your uh, little boy not to play with the wall plug? I'm afraid he might pull it off. W-O-O-F, hoople. That was the sound of P.D.Q. Bach with his trauma rye for unaccompanied piano, Mr. Heinrich Seifenblase at the keyboard. Well, I guess that just about wraps things up for today. And I hope you'll be joining me next week, when in all likelihood I'll be bringing you yet another... Report from Hoople.
Hello there, everybody. This is your friendly Professor Peter Shickley with yet another report from Hoople. Well, here we are again with another program of fine music and PDQ Bach. We'll start with a little of the latter as usual as we hear the Schleptet in E flat major as performed by members of the Freshman 4-H Club Symphonic Society of the University of Southern North Dakota at Hoople. And we'd like to do this one for John and Biffy and their advisor, Mr. 4-H Club himself, Harry Herbert Hoover Heaver. <laughs> Thank you. 
And that was PDQ Box Schleptet in E flat major, performed quite enthusiastically, I think, by students at SNDU at H. And I must say, why Beethoven's septet receives performance after performance while this work remains shrouded in obscurity is something I will never understand. W-O-O-F, Hoople. And it's time to play What's My Melodic Line? The game where you try to stump E Virtuosi de Hoople by sending in the score to any instrumental piece written between 1600 and 1750. Our musicians here who are probably more familiar with the corpus of the Baroque repertoire than perhaps anyone else in the world would want to be, they are given nothing but the title. And if they are unable within one minute to begin playing the opening section of the work, the listener who sent the piece in receives a beautiful painted plaster bust of Giuseppe Torelli and becomes eligible for the grand prize presented at our annual Baroque bingo banquet of the complete works of Vivaldi, recorded on convenient 45 RPM records, which will be sent out one a week with the compliments of WOOF over a period of 35 years. Now today we have a very interesting coincidence. Three listeners have sent in works by the same composer. That composer is Archangelo Spumoni. Now, he is one of the most prolific and least known of the many prolific and unknown Baroque composers, so I think our boys here may be in for a little bit of trouble. Well, I'm looking at them now through the big plate glass window that separates the announcer's studio from the, halo from the music studio, and they have their instruments ready, so let's get started. Our first piece was sent in by Thorn Thornson from over there in Beulah, and he wants to see if you fellows can play... Spumoni's Concerto Grosso in F Major, Opus 2, number 537. Well, they're conferring now among themselves. Archangelo Spumoni was born in 1605 and flourished around 1700. He was a pupil of Vivaldi and distantly related to Casanova's mother, Bossa Nova. And this concerto is subtitled La Primavera. Until recently, it was referred to when referred to at all as the Spring Concerto. However, a recent paper by Professor Paul Bearer, published in the current issue of the musical Hind Quarterly, reveals that Spumoni was married twice during his life, both times to women named Vera, making it clear that the subtitle is in fact a dedication to his first wife. Well, I've gotten the signal from me virtuosi now, so let's see what they come up with. That is absolutely correct, gentlemen. That is how Spumoni's Opus 2, number 537 begins. All right, now next we have a piece sent in by Miss Sarah Saracen, who lives in Plum Coulee up in Manitoba. And the piece she's hoping will trip you up is the Trio Sonata in E Major by Spumoni, Opus 1, number 1. Okay, the boys are already ready, so let's hear it. You did it again, boys. Now we have a very tricky one for our harpsichord player. It was sent in by Sonny Sonson from Zap, and he wonders if you can remember the first of Spumoni's three-part inventions, Opus 6, number 4 to the power 9. Be careful now, Gerald. Do you think you know how it goes? Oh, no. No, you fell into the trap, Gerald. Gerald, you fell into the trap. That's the first of the two-part inventions, which were written at about the same time, but uh, show them the three-part inventions. See? That's right. That's number one of the three-part inventions. 
Well, Mr. Sunson, you really stumped him. And you'll be receiving your plaster bust of Torelli, and your name will be put in the hat for that grand prize next December. Sorry about that, Mr. Thornson and Miss Saracen. You failed to stumpy virtuosi, but we'll be sending you our consolation prize, the Toscanini recordings of the nine Beethoven symphonies. I hope you try again, and better luck next time. It's all part of the fun on What's My Melodic Line. W-O-O-F gives you the time of day. At the sound of the tone, the time will be exactly 8.14 and 23 seconds. And let's see what the big stories are in today's Hoople Scoop. Uh, seems to be mostly ads today. Uh, oh, here's an important item. A report from Minot that fish in the Mouse River have been dying by the hundreds due to the low water level. State health and game officials have requested that water from Lake Darling be rushed downhill to the Minot area as quickly as possible. And now let's take a look at the statewide junior high intramural basketball scores for last night. Fargo beat Bismarck 108 to 3 and Devils Lake dumped Dickinson 7 to 6. Anamoose trounced Tuttle 205 to 189 while McVille murdered Mose 487 to 32. Cogswell clobbered Gwinner 93 to 60 as Velva and Voltaire tied at 20-20, while Pingree punctured Daisy 40 to 19. Cannonball flattened Frida 206 to 106 and Donnie Brooks squeezed out air 503 to 501. Meanwhile, Vang was victorious over Menango 2 to 1, overly overwhelmed Napoleon 18 to 12, Gackel and Fingal were even at 7 up, and Beulah bowed to Bert 20 to 1. And that's the news from the Late City edition of the Hoople Scoop. And it's PDQ Bach time again. And this time we're going to hear the Fugue in C minor for Calliope Four Hands, Shickley number 3.14. This piece is sometimes known as the Toot Fugue, and we will now hear it performed by the famous four-handed organist, Emmanuel Pedal, playing on the chamber or indoor calliope of the Grindig Family Circus at Eagle, Austria. And this is for Carl and Philip and Manny and all the rest of the gang down there at the King's Court Motel. <laughs>
That was the Toot Fugue in C minor for Calliope Four Hands by P.D.Q. Bach, as interpreted by Emmanuel Pedal, whose tutor, incidentally, was Albert Schweitzer himself. And I think if one compares this work to the awkward contrapuntal exercises of early 19th century composers, uh, Beethoven, for instance, uh, one cannot help but be convinced of the superiority of even the lesser Baroque masters. W-double-O-F So let's move into the final portion of the show here and take a look at what's happening in home economics. I'll bet you didn't realize that 44% of families living in cities do some home canning. They put up an average of... Oh, oh, it's back again. I was afraid this would happen. No! 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 What did he say? I don't care what he does. Nothing can make me say. I like Beethoven's symphonies. No! 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 Put on, put on a commercial. Your nose all rough from taking snuff, you know it will get rougher. A PDQ will prove to you that you needn't suffer, you really needn't suffer. My special blend will give no end of reason to be jolly. A recipe that came to me from Sir Walter Raleigh, the greater Walter Raleigh. What can you lose? What can you lose? Well, I will say this, that uh, considering his handicap, Beethoven did, did pretty well. As some of his country dances are very nice pieces. And now, a lot of people have written in recently about the theme song of this program, and both of them wanted to know if it's a PDQ Bach piece. Well, I'm surprised that you would have to ask. It certainly is. It's the Sinfonia from his diverse airs on sundry notions and features extensive solos on the worm. Now, in addition to the worm turns, this piece is also marred by the sneezing of the countertenor. But I'll be glad to play the entire movement since you asked for it. And I hope you'll join me again next week when I may very well be back with another... Report from Hoople.